Hello, this is me, Stephen Christensen of Star Circle Academy. The purpose of Star Circle Academy is to find and shoot night fo photos. We look for all kinds of interesting locations, and when we find them, well, we stay there all night long, sometimes. In a previous example of this, uh, I showed you how to find locations in Alabama Hills or any other location using Flickr. This location I previously showed you is Cyclops. What this tool Photographers Ephemeris is actually doing, and I'll go to the Ephemeris page, is it's showing you from any given date, this is November 6th, 7th, and so forth, from any given date which direction the sunrise will occur, that's the light yellow, and which direction the sunset will occur. It's for any place you put this red marker. Also moonrise and moonset. Obviously the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, and generally the same is true for the moon. So on this particular day, we can see that sunrise, it looks like the direction where the sun will rise, there is a tall knoll, maybe a mini mountain, right in the way. So the real question is, how tall is this thing? So how far after sunrise do we have to wait before the sun will illuminate our object here? Well, we can advance in time, and it will select the next interesting event, sunrise. Well, at sunrise, that's here. We need, however, for the sun to be above this knoll. But guess what? Ephemeris just calculated it for us. When I put this gray marker here, it said how far above the horizon is this relative to that? The answer, it's 2 degrees. So now I know that I can advance my time until the sun is 2 degrees high. I'm moving it to the right. And you'll notice it changed from gray to black. That is when the sun should hit. And also notice the sun is changing position. We really need to look here as well, make sure that that's OK. And it's plus 1.3. Good. There's only one thing I should warn you about here. If there is a building, a tree, a large object, a huge boulder sitting on this hill, it might make a difference. This terrain map is not completely perfectly uh, accurate down to the micro level, but it's a pretty good approximation. We also need to make sure that as we look out in the distance that there isn't something higher. We could go pretty far and I don't think we're going to see anything higher until we get somewhere around the mountains around Death Valley and they're so far away that the angle is pretty low. So I'm not going to worry about that. Next thing I might be interested in is when does the sun set on the summit of Mount Whitney. Why? Well, because Mount Whitney, let me put the gray marker over here, Mount Whitney is the tallest mountain in the lower 48. So that means from this location that we're sitting, the angle is going to be <laughs> definitely less than zero. I've moved the marker somewhere pretty close to the summit of Mount Whitney, and you'll notice it calculates that the angle between the starting location and the summit of Whitney is 10 degrees. That means a lot of things. One thing it means is when the sun is actually set on along this line over here, it's already 10 degrees below Mount Whitney. So what we'd like to do is find out when the sun is just going to kiss Mount Whitney. We'll advance the thing to sunset. We know that that's not the right time. And we'll back up. I'm using the left arrow key. I'm going to back up until the sun altitude and the apparent altitude are about the same. That gets us pretty close. So right there at 4.48 p.m., 16.48, is when we can actually catch the sun hitting the summit of Mount Whitney. But that's only true if it's actually in that direction, but it's not. You see, I've zoomed out, and you can see the sun is actually going to be down here, not near the summit of Whitney. Well, we got a couple things we can do. One is we can move the cursor. And now we know where to stand so that we can get the sun on the summit of Whitney. Obviously, we want to dial this in, get as close as we possibly can, fine-tune it. And when we find that you know, it's a middle of a road or something like that, of course, we'll have to make an adjustment. So what I've just described for you is how to use the photographer's ephemeris to find the direction of sunrise and sunset, moonrise and moonset, and even showed you how you can try and find and make it align over a particular object or di different particular direction. I'm Stephen Christensen of Star Circle Academy. Thank you.